before radios, light bulbs, and the telephone were even a thing. They were there. Later, when it was room-sized machines connected with vacuum tubes, they pioneered the languages we programmed them with. When the idea of a computer in every home was the stuff of science fiction, they made it a reality. When the question was asked, can machines think? They set out to find the answer. And when it came to connecting us, despite whatever distances divided us, they blazed the trail. Throughout it all, they've gone where no one has gone before. They've changed the game. They've opened our imaginations. And they've made it possible for anyone to do what they do. No one knows precisely what the future holds. But one thing is certain. Developers will build it. Please welcome MongoDB Chief Product Officer, Sahir Azam. Good morning. Good morning, Chicago. I'm watching season two of The Bear. Big fan right now, so Chicago is very <laughs> top of mind. Well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're really excited to be here. Amazing to see the awesome turnout. Thank you all for coming in person. Obviously, we've all evolved to working remotely or in hybrid settings over the last few years, but nothing kind of replaces this type of a setting where we can all meet in person. So thank you for coming out. MongoDB's business has expanded quite a bit over the last few years. And one of the things we're really focused on this year is bringing our technologists, our knowledge, our community out to where you all are. So beyond even Chicago, we're in going to be 29 cities this year, from Asia Pacific to the UK to broader Europe, all the way to Asia Pac, reaching developers wherever they are to spread the knowledge of MongoDB and share the amazing things that you all are building. First off, I want to thank our sponsors. We have a variety of cloud service partners, implementation partners, and technology partners represented here today. Please, when you're on the show floor, spend some time with them. This is really important to building an entire ecosystem of value that you can leverage inside of your organizations. Now, to step back, MongoDB's vision has always been to empower innovators, to be able to create, transform, and disrupt industries by fundamentally leveraging the power of software and data. This was true all the way back 15 years ago when our founders started the company, and it's true today. And when we talk about innovators, we mean people like you. Developers, technologists who build the modern applications that power each and every one of our personal and business lives. Now, in order to make life easier for developers and to unleash this creativity, the obvious question is, where do developers spend most of their time? And the answer is wrangling and working with data. It's estimated that developers can spend anywhere from 30 to 70% of their time working with data while building an application. So our goal at MongoDB is to make that as easy as possible, to make it simple for working with a heterogeneous set of data to enable efficiency, productivity, and ultimately impact. This has been our North Star since day one. It drives every single decision we make in our planning cycles, our roadmaps, new products, new features we develop. It's always about making it easier and simpler to leverage your rich data as part of your application experience. Now, in order to do this, many years ago, MongoDB was founded on the principle of being one of the first databases, if not the first database, designed by developers for developers. And that starts fundamentally with a completely different way of working with data. And that starts at the data model. And so we bet the farm, our technology, our strategy, our architecture, on the document model. And for the first time, the way you interact with data in a database aligns to the way modern object-oriented programming works. It maps to the way you think and code. We then back this data model with a novel distributed architecture that leverages the scale-out characteristics of cloud-native architecture and builds in things like high availability and fault tolerance out of the box. 
This is essential given the new infrastructure paradigms that we've seen, especially in the public cloud. And over time, we invested heavily. We brought forward mission critical capabilities from traditional systems into this modern architecture and modern data model. We added multi-document asset transactions. We added enterprise grade manageability and security. And this has enabled organizations like you to leverage MongoDB for the most incredibly demanding and sophisticated applications that you have in your organization. Now today, I'm proud to say that we have over 43,000 customers representing companies small and large across almost any industry vertical you can think of. Every corner of the globe, spanning a variety of different use cases, from systems of engagement to systems of record, all the way through systems of insight. Many organizations bet their entire company on running on MongoDB. In the last year alone, we had 1.5 million developers who began learning and trying MongoDB. We also have an ecosystem now of over 1,000 technology and service partners that expand our technology footprint to derive even more value for you, our customers in our ecosystem. Now, building on this success, we saw an opportunity to leverage the public cloud, to shift our focus to leverage modern infrastructure, SaaS-based solutions, to meet the ever-expanding needs of modern applications. And what we see day in and day out is those requirements are constantly increasing and pushing forward. Our applications need to be always on. They need to be close to zero latency. The amount of data we need to process, the volume is constantly growing. We need to be able to show our end users and customers the relevant information at the right time and have applications be more intelligent than ever. This is all in many ways table stakes. You all see this every day. You're being asked to deliver more in your applications, your software with greater efficiency. Now, unfortunately, solving for this expanding set of requirements often leads to a lot of sprawl, a lot of complexity, with a lot of bolt-on solutions. And even though the cloud has redefined the way we build applications, it's also introduced a fair amount of complexity and cost. What we saw as an industry is as application use cases expanded and requirements for applications grew, organizations typically had to bolt on a variety of specialized database technologies. Maybe a key value store for some high volume non-transactional data, search engine, graph database, et cetera. And this made the overall data architecture quite complex. Now, on top of that, you layer in the fact that data is becoming more distributed. Developers start lo developing locally on their laptop, perhaps run things in a hybrid model in their on-premises data center, all the way to one or multiple public cloud environments, and now all the way through to the edge. So being able to support a variety of different models also creates complexity operationally and from a security perspective for many organizations. So we stepped back and said, how can we aim to solve this problem? this sprawl that slows teams down and creates organizational complexity and cost. And that's where we focused on launching MongoDB Atlas. But unlike most cloud services, we really focused on driving something new and fundamentally different into the market. We introduced the industry's first globally distributed data platform that can run across multiple cloud providers but still provide you with one seamless and elegant interface to work with. Now, there were a lot of skeptics back in 2016 when we launched Atlas, because they couldn't believe that we could both compete and partner with our friends at the major hyperscale cloud providers. But the reality is in the numbers. We now have over 40,000 customers deploying an Atlas in over 111 regions worldwide. We deliver world-class geographic coverage, resilience, and scale more than any cloud data platform in the industry. And our coverage is only growing. In fact, one of the most exciting things about our technology is that we're deeply integrated into the major cloud providers that we ride on top of. In fact, we're the only ISV that's available in all three management consoles from AWS, Azure, and GCP, making it seamless for you to introduce our technology into your broader, broader ecosystem and architecture. And there's more coming. In addition to multi-cloud functionality, Atlas dramatically simplifies your our overall technology stack and architecture with this idea of the industry's first developer data platform that supports an intuitive, elegant interface that makes it easier to deal and reason with a single set of data, 
but still support a wide array of those application requirements and use cases and deploy anywhere from on-premises all the way to the public cloud and to the edge. That's our focus and strategy. And instead of bolting on additional point solutions that you have to then learn and integrate and manage that creates that complexity and sprawl, we bring forward a single platform that brings together OLTP capabilities, the ability to process high volumes of time series data, enabling full text search capabilities for a rich user experience, and in-app analytics, being able to deliver those more intelligent and sophisticated application experiences. This fundamentally makes your lives easier. It reduces the cost of building applications, reduces the sprawl of multiple technologies, and ultimately makes it easier to operate and scale as you move forward. Now, we know that requirements from the business, from our customers, are always expanding. We're always being asked to deliver more. And if anything, the world is not static. Business has to be real time, all the time, whether you're serving customers overnight that are across the globe or locally in your own region. And we're seeing increasingly a variety of real-time use cases come our way, and our customers are asking us to solve these. This can range from anything from analyzing streaming financial data to identify fraud in real time, or optimizing pricing automatically based on clickstream behavior in an e-commerce application, for example, or perhaps dynamically adjusting a shipping route based on real-time supply chain information. These are all examples of real-time application experiences reacting to a non-static world. The data that drives these experiences often is rich, heterogeneous, and rapidly changing, and sits inside of a core technology like a streaming platform. Typically, we'll see something like Apache Kafka, AWS Kinesis, that house this streaming data and collect it from a variety of different sources across the enterprise. The challenge, though, is how you actually leverage that fire hose of data to enable a richer application experience. So how are developers doing it today? One common approach is to leverage a connector. This provides a basic integration from a source to a sync where you can take streaming data, persist it in your operational database, and then process it afterwards. This is nice as a first step and works well for low volumes of data. But as the volume grows and the complexity of that information scales, it's no longer efficient or necessarily practical to persist the data before you process it. And so typically then, we see developers switching to writing custom processing logic or introducing a stream processor into the system, which actually moves the queries directly onto the streams themselves, as opposed to waiting for it to persist in an operational database. Although this is an improvement, oftentimes, in using a connector, this approach brings its own challenges. First and foremost, the prevalent stream processing technologies today all are based on rigid schemas, which fundamentally doesn't work well with sparse and the heterogeneous data that's flowing through the pipes of these streaming platforms. It creates friction, it creates errors, and requires you to create more complex code to deal with the heterogeneity and the mismatch of those schemas and data. The second challenge is fragmentation. Introducing another stream processing layer adds another component to your architecture, another API, another driver that hinders the developer experience. And ultimately, this creates more complexity and sprawl in the architecture, both for operations, for security, and of course, the DevOps teams. So we asked ourselves, what if working with streaming data was as easy as working with MongoDB? MongoDB is a natural fit for processing and working with streaming data. More often than not, the data we see in streaming pipelines is JSON-based. It's modern, object-oriented information. So it matches naturally to our document model. We're designed fundamentally for scale and flexibility that's critical for these streaming processing use cases. And that's why we're excited to announce recently Atlas Stream Processing. We give you everything you need to create responsive applications that can react to real-time events based on the data that lives in your existing streaming platforms. So we're not asking you to rip and replace anything. We're layering seamlessly on top of it. And it's fundamentally built around our document model. You can easily manage the flexibility of data and get around the, need, the challenges of rigid schemas. We extended our query engine and our API to be able to process continuous streams of data that are flowing through these pipes. 
And this is all delivered in the same elegant and integrated API. So you can manage both data in motion and data at rest seamlessly through one application experience. Simply put, Atlas Stream Processing transforms the way developers work with streaming data. It makes it easy. It makes it natural, the same way you've all come to love MongoDB. Now, across industries, we've been really excited to work with a handful of design partners as we've developed this capability. We work with an agricultural company that's helping optimize harvesting in real time. We work with an energy provider that's taking real time information off a power grid and reacting to those events in real time to optimize. And we think we're just scratching the surface of the types of applications you all will build. So to learn more, please join the talk later called Going Real Time with MongoDB Atlas with Cassiano and Robert. Now, you might be asking, um, I don't know, 10, 15 slides into a presentation, you know, real-time requirements are great, but how is it possible that I haven't mentioned the biggest potential shift in our industry in quite some time? Every team, every developer, every boardroom is looking at how does AI affect our business? And from our lens, AI is all about building smarter and more intelligent applications. And we know that empowering developers to embed AI capabilities as part of the application experience will be critical to building the next generation of apps. And we're excited to talk about how we're implementing AI, both in our technologies, but also giving you the tools to build this capability into your applications on top of our existing modern, resilient, and scalable platform. We've seen an explosion of AI companies, startups, and enterprises building on MongoDB Atlas already. Companies value our flexibility, our performance, and our ease of use. And in the past six months, we've seen 550 companies, that, the ones we can figure out at least, that are building AI applications on top of our platform. This is just the beginning. In the next few years, it's our belief that whether you're managing an existing application and evolving it, or building a brand new startup from scratch, some sort of machine learning or AI capability will be critical to success and differentiation in your market. So we asked ourselves, how can we make, make it easy? How can we make it simple for developers to add AI capabilities to their application without having to introduce another point solution? Increasing that sprawl, increasing cost, and increasing complexity. We started with that unified and elegant API. How do we focus on a compelling developer experience, but in the context of these generative AI applications. And this led us to vectors. This is one of the core technologies that help power many of the AI experiences you read about in the news every day today or use in your personal lives. Vectors are a foundational element that allow us to model any type of entity, a song, an image, a video, a poem, as points in n-dimensional space. You can then use algorithms to compare the characteristics of these different things and query ones to find ones that are similar without having to worry about keywords, metadata, or synonyms when searching. It's called semantic search. Now, the semantic search powering vectors has been around for some time, driving search experiences in many of the rich e-commerce applications we may use day in, day out, the search engines that we all use. But one of the most interesting use cases we see today, especially in the last six to nine months, as things have really exploded with generative AI, is leveraging vector stores to augment and ground the capabilities of public foundational LLMs. So you can use your business's proprietary and unique data to deliver a compelling application experience, not just relying on the public models like OpenAI. And that's why we're excited to announce the public preview of Atlas Vector Search. This is one of the most Exciting features we've added to the platform. The inbound interest just in the last month and a half since we've released it has been higher than anything we've seen in quite some time, given all the buzz and what everyone's doing with AI. But what it does is it allows us to uniquely bring together your core operational data, your source data, your metadata about the objects that are your, your images, your sounds, your video that you're vectorizing, a keyword-based search index, and a similarity-based vector search all into a single system under an elegant and integrated API. So all the major data components that you need for an operational AI capability in your application delivered in one place. Now, to give you a flavor of what we're seeing being built on this already, one of my favorite examples is a um, top 10 auto manufacturer. They're based out of Europe, but they're a global brand. 
And they're actually focused on leveraging vector search as well as other capabilities in MongoDB to help with engine diagnostics. How many of you, when you take your car into a repair shop or a dealership, start the conversation with, I, I'm hearing a funky noise, something's up, I hear a rattle or I hear some sort of a buzz? Well, one of the interesting things that this car maker is doing is leveraging our platform to diagnose based on audio. And the way it works is they first store all the information about their vehicles, the make, the years, all the characteristics and metadata about their different vehicles they produce in our core MongoDB database, standard collections. They then index that data using standard text search so their technicians can search for information based on standard keywords and synonyms. They then record a corpus of audio files and vectorize that that represent common problems that they see across those different vehicle types. So now, when a car drives into the shop, they can take a quick recording, run a vector similarity search, and match quickly to diagnose what that sound is in terms of a common problem. You can think of it as like Shazam on your iPhone, but for diagnosing car problems. That's the first step. The next step then, of course, is repairing the problem. How do you actually go ahead and fix it? And oftentimes, what that means is a technician has to go into either a digital version or a physical version of repair manuals. Figure out once they think what they, they know what the problem is, what the symptom is, what the steps are to repair it to the manufacturer's OEM guidelines. Well, this is where that LLM augmentation comes in. They're now focused on vectorizing the unstructured text of all of these repair manuals, making that available in a chat natural language interface, so leveraging that proprietary data in the Atlas Vector Store, but then pushing it to an LLM so their technicians can start to interact and get the answers on how to pinpoint the problem without going through pages and pages of manuals or having to search for the exact page in the digital versions of the PDFs. This overall will save them millions of dollars as it gets rolled across all of their repair shops globally because it cuts down the time from diagnosis to ultimately fixing the issue by an order of magnitude, all powered by AI capabilities. Now, we think we are just beginning to see some of these use cases emerge. It's early days. To quote uh, one of our product VPs at MongoDB, we're in the AOL era of generative AI, so I'm sure there's a lot more to come. But we are excited to see many companies trying these capabilities across a variety of use cases, from dynamic pricing to recommendation engines. We work with Okta, the identity startup, on leveraging vector search to give customers more flexibility when requesting access to different systems internally. We work with a startup that's leveraging call transcripts and chats to help prioritize sentiment around what drives their roadmap. So as you start to look at these capabilities in your organization, please check out mongodb.com. Vector search is available in public preview. It's part of your core Atlas platform. There's nothing additional you need to get started. It's all just there. Now, more broadly in the AI ecosystem, there's a lot of innovation happening. So beyond our own technology, we're excited to be building out a vibrant partner ecosystem. And this is growing every day. We're working with innovative startups that are focused on the developer experience of building generative AI into the applications, think companies like MindsDB or Langchain, to cloud service providers and major players who build upstack services that rely on MongoDB data to power an AI experience, so our major three cloud providers as an example. We're gonna continue to invest here. If there are vendors and technologies that you're seeing is interesting in your side, in your environment, please get the feedback to our team. We're eager to work with as many companies in this ecosystem as possible. Now, one of the things we wanna do is foster AI innovation in the enterprise, both in large companies and startups. And so we recently announced the MongoDB AI Innovators Program. This allows you to get Atlas credits up to $25,000 expert advice from our technical specialists, co-marketing and partnership opportunities, and access to our rich developer ecosystem. You can go to mongodb.com, you'll see information about signing up. We hopefully can jumpstart your innovation, your prototyping inside your organization, and we'll love to work with you on that. Now, as you can see, our goal with our developer data platform is constantly to simplify and expand for the new requirements you're seeing in your environment. So beyond OLTP and time series, we've now added stream processing and vector search, core foundational operational data capabilities to our platform. Now, stepping back, 
one of the first areas that we focused on when we were expanding beyond our OLTP core was full text search. We saw that companies oftentimes need to deploy a specialized search database, a Solar, an Elasticsearch, for example, side by side with their operational database. They then need to stand up a data pipeline or a streaming system to keep data synchronized between their operational store and their search engine. And this leads to more complexity and more cost in the environment. So we knew there had to be a better way. So in 2020, we launched Atlas Search, which we believe is the easiest way to bring full text relevance-based search into your applications. We allow you to easily create search indexes. We automatically keep those search indexes incrementally in sync with your core operational data. We expanded our API so you can use the same drivers, the same language you're familiar with for your search engine now alongside your core database. And there's no extra operational burden. It's all seamless. It feels like it's just part of the database. And the response from customers has been quite tremendous. It's one of our most popular products, actually, in our portfolio, growing uh, month over month. And a couple cool examples, uh, now that we've seen some large-scale companies really deploy over the last couple years. One of my favorites is Albertsons. They're the second largest grocery and supermarket chain in North America. They run Acme, Safeway, Kings. They have a whole bunch of different brands. They built a technology called Enterprise Promotions Engine, which is part of their e-commerce experience, which helps customers find products and offers based on what's in their digital shopping carts. Now, as you can imagine, when you're shopping on their application, the response time has to be real time. It needs to be in milliseconds, so performance really matters. And in their case, they were able to simplify their architecture and remove the need for an in-memory cache completely and remove the need for a search engine by consolidating into MongoDB Atlas. This is a massive platform. This enterprise promotions engine manages 50,000 product SKUs in over 2,000 stores across the country. And get this, they drive half a million promotions every day to 24 million shoppers. It's a massive platform. I'm sure many of you have probably used it without even knowing behind the scenes it's got Atlas uh, Search powering that experience. But they're certainly not alone. Another great example is Zebra. They're headquartered nearby in Lincolnshire. They have an ecosystem of over 10,000 partners in over 100 countries. And in fact, they count 94% of the Fortune 100 as customers of theirs. So they're very successful. And they help with hardware, software, and integrated solutions that digitize and automate business processes and workflows. So they use us for a variety of use cases. They leverage us to search image metadata from ML and analytics. They leverage us to power their user management and device management experiences in the stores. The interesting thing here is they were able to remove their elastic search deployment completely from their stack and enable a range of different use cases, all while saving cost and improving performance in their environment because the data was more up to date. This is just some of the cool examples we're seeing with the integration of, integration of an operational database and a search engine in one. Now today, I'm happy to highlight that we're continuing to invest here. We've had this product for a couple years, but this is somewhere we're investing in scaling the teams quite aggressively. One of the first things I want to call out is dedicated Atlas search nodes. This allows you now to independently scale out and optimize the resources powering your search indexes independently from the shards and clusters powering your core operational database. This improves performance, gives you more granular controls and, and scalability, all without sacrificing that integrated operational and developer experience. We also added capabilities around programmatically managing the search indexes. So whether it's Compass, our IDE integrations, our shell, all of our command line tools, you can now manage the search index process as part of your CI, CD pipeline or your scripted processes. And last but not least, we added search query analytics, which actually gives you insight and information on how your end users are actually searching your data, which enables you to iterate and refine your search results and logic to make it smarter and smarter over time. We have an aggressive roadmap with more to come, but please check out these new capabilities on Atlas today. Now, the reason I brought up search is I hope the takeaway is that we are as motivated at MongoDB to continuously innovate around our existing products and features as much as we are adding new ones. Because making sure our platform is resilient, scalable, and as performant as you need is a crucial thing in terms of delivering value to our customers. Now, one of the things that's always top of mind for any database technology, any database company, is the concept of scale. But usually, 
we think of scale in a pretty narrow way on a single dimension, typically thinking about the keeping pace with your user demand, the number of users, or the amount of data being managed, and how do you do that at cost, efficient, cost efficiently without sacrificing user experience and over-provisioning resources. Now, I'm not trying to say application performance is not important. It is crucially important. It is the number one way people think about scale for a reason. However, we think of scale and hear from you that scale matters in other vectors as well. One is scaling the velocity of your teams. So as you add new development teams and scale out your organization, how do you keep the velocity and innovation going so you can keep building compelling user features and end capabilities for your customer? Perhaps even embedding an AI capability as an example. We also think about the scale of our end users. Many of our applications now serve hundreds of thousands, if not millions of end users. And people aren't all in the same place, which means that data has to be more distributed. Perhaps you want to move data to a particular region for latency or for uh, data sovereignty reasons. Data is becoming more sprawled and more distributed across the globe. And how to scale that is becoming a challenge. And last but certainly not least, scaling our security posture. We're all facing a diversity of threats and bad actors. You can all read the headlines almost weekly at this point. So constantly evolving your security insight is also another vector of scale that we think about. And the reality is, is if you think about the life cycle of your application, you need to scale across all of these dimensions, not just performance. And we need, we're trying to deliver a platform that enables you in a very, very comprehensive way when we think about scale. And that was the core motivation behind a lot of the features in our latest release, MongoDB 7.0. And I'm thrilled to announce that today, MongoDB 7.0 is generally available for production. You can download it on mongodb.com. So I'd love to dig into some of the details around how we've scaled various aspects of the technology. Now, many of you run lar large MongoDB deployments, and you're familiar with sharding. This is a critical capability that allows you to horizontally scale MongoDB efficiently to meet the performance needs of your application. Just to give you a couple examples of what this means, we work with a company called Bizarre Voice. They're the largest independent product review site in the world. They use, hundreds of, uh, they use dozens of shards to manage hundreds of millions of updates every day. The scale is made possible at a cost-effective way because of this horizontal scaling capability. And in 7.0, we're making this even easier. We're adding capability called Shard Key Advisor. This gives you metrics around read and write patterns and cardinality that make it easier, easier for you to select your initial shard key and evaluate and refine it over time as your application evolves. We're also adding a performance feature called Auto Chunk Merging. This reduces the latency by up to 10x when working with shard management operations, such as rebalancing your cluster or adding or removing shards. This isn't necessarily always the most exciting feature and capability, but for you, all of you that are in operations and have to manage large-scale clusters, doing that without downtime, adding scale, removing scale, is a critical capability, so we're investing heavily in making that easier and easier with these two capabilities and features. Let's shift to performance. Of course, we're always investing here. Any database is always trying to make things faster. We're excited to announce that we've been optimizing our query execution logic and query engine in pretty fundamental ways. So you can leverage less disk reads, less compute resources, and less memory to execute common queries. For example, for queries leveraging groups, say you want to aggregate up your sales transactions, you can now see up to a 50% improvement in latency. For more fundamental queries, filters, sorts, you can see an improvement of up to 90%. And last but not least, our lookup capability, you've probably heard about that earlier in our data modeling talk, which is our equivalent of a join, is now 30x faster on our replica set, making it easier to combine complex information together. These are just a few of the application performance improvements we've made in the core database itself. Let's shift to scaling delivery and velocity. We've added new aggregation pipeline operators, percentiles, median, which make it easier for you to build simpler code and push more processing down to the database, making it faster and more efficient. We also added capabilities to our time series collections. We're seeing an immense growth in IoT systems, manufacturing systems, trading systems, where you're dealing with large volumes of time series measurements. 
We've now added support for deletes, partial TTL indexes, so you can roll off data and manage it more easily across its lifecycle, and we've improved the read performance of group queries. You'll see more and more investment in time series as we see more of the scale of this data across all of our customers worldwide. We've also made some key improvements to change streams. Many of you leverage this capability to subscribe from real-time changes from your database. We work with companies like 7-Eleven that uses this to power the digital wallet experience you might have on your app or their in-store inventory management. We work with Keller Williams, the, uh, the enormous real estate agency that deals with all the data around the different houses that they list at any given time and update that in real time using change streams. It's a pretty foundational element for any real time application. We even continue to invest and increase the performance of change streams, which allows you to support both filtered use cases and different topologies. Now, change streams links up to a new capability we added in 6.0 called cluster to cluster synchronization. This is a use case we heard quite often for a variety of different use cases, hybrid environments. Perhaps you have a system of record on premises and you want to replicate certain data to Atlas to enable various partners or applications to integrate with that data. Maybe you want to automatically synchronize your test environment to your dev environment or vice versa. Or perhaps you want to feed an ML training environment based on your production data, but you don't want to have that all in the same operational cluster. With 7.0, we've taken this even further. We've added filtered sync. So now you don't have to copy over or synchronize the entire database. You can filter down to a collection level and move that over to another target database if needed. We've also added support for different topologies. Let's say your operational database has certain compute, CPU, sharding requirements, and that's different than your ML training environment that may need more vertical scale to be able to process large amounts of data and memory, for example. You don't have to have matching topologies on either side. We can have mismatches and even different versions now to synchronize information. And finally, if we dig into security, we're focused on two key areas in 7.0, encryption, and authentication and authorization. Security is obviously very top of mind. I just read last week, two weeks ago, that IBM Security reported that 95% of organizations have had at least one data breach, which is kind of shocking. And the average cost of a data breach is now $4.5 million. So the stakes are definitely high. And there are plenty of reports that sort of support this type of information worldwide. And so, all the way down at the data platform layer, we think it's our responsibility to try to build as secure a platform as possible for you all to build on top of. So some of the things we're excited to announce. First, starting with encryption. Now for background, many applications, many database technologies, et cetera, of course leverage encryption. And that shows up in two forms typically, your data in transit, your HTTPS, your TLS, encrypting data over the wire as it moves from the client to the application, to the database, et cetera and data at rest, so encrypting the underlying disks, perhaps, and maybe even taking that further and allowing you to bring your own encryption keys so you can control who has access to those encrypted disks. The challenge has always been data in use, and what I mean by data in use is data that's actively in memory, queryable by the server-side system. There's always been a bit of a massive trade-off here because that data is almost always decrypted so your database can actually process and understand the information and return results. But the fact that information is decrypted in memory, that it means that it is exposed. It's exposed to bad actors or privileged users that maybe have unauthorized access. It allows potentially third parties in your hosting provider, your cloud provider, your database provider to have unnecessary access to that information. So it is a vector that we needed to close in terms of risk. Now, typical approaches to dealing with memory and use use client-side encryption. We've had this in MongoDB for a few years, and certainly a key capability. It's great for regulated workloads, PII, healthcare information, but one of the challenges with that is that it's deterministic, meaning you're always going to be able to only exact match a particular query when your client-side data is encrypted. It's fine when you're pulling information for a single user or a single transaction, but it doesn't allow you to run rich, sophisticated queries on the data. And so you could have this encryption in use, but your data is not as useful as you'd like it to be. So a couple years ago, we worked with a team from Brown University. We acquired their technology, brought the team in-house at MongoDB, and started on working on a new feature called queryable encryption. 
This uses non-deterministic encryption. That means that every time you run the algorithm, it's gonna produce a different hash and randomized values. And it also allows us to keep most of that data queryable. So we're excited to announce that this is now GA in MongoDB 7.0. Today, we support equality searches as well as point queries. And we're actively working on adding capabilities for range, prefix and suffix, substring queries and searches in the future. This is an industry first. We're the first database technology to ever bring searchable queries to encryption in use. Now, let's move on to authentication and authorization. We're excited to announce capability and integration with OIDC. This is an open standard that makes it easier to enable in-app authentication using modern SSO providers and industry standards without the complexity and annoyance from my own history of Kerberos and LDAP. So it's just keeping up with the latest trends in security and authentication. We are also adding a capability called dynamic view permissions. This allows you to create a single pipeline or a single query that can be used to generate a dynamic view with custom results based on the role of the end user querying the, app, querying the database. So for example, if your application serves doctors, nurses, administrators, they all may need different access controls to the same underlying data. In the past, you would have to build separate queries, separate pipelines to deal with the different access control rights of those different roles in an organization. Now, you can pass in the user role and we'll automatically filter that pipeline to the subset of data that that particular individual or role has access to. Again, making it simpler and easier, requiring less application code logic. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of great features, more that are listed on our website in 7.0, but we also want to remind you of our stable API. This makes it easier to maintain up to speed and upgrade to MongoDB. The stable API maintains API compatibility backwards between releases. So you can move through these MongoDB versions without necessarily making app changes at the same time and enable these new capabilities on our platform as you see fit and as your natural development cycles evolve, making it easier and easier to get the newest value out of our capabilities and platform in the database. Now, to learn more about 7.0, please attend David's talk later. We'll get into much more detail that I'm covering here. I'm sure we'll have many of our technology specialists on the floor that wanna, if you have any questions about how we've implemented anything or any of the more specific nuances of any of these features. Now, it's cool to be able to leverage all these amazing capabilities, and it's a lot easier if you're building a new application. It's greenfield, you can get started and with the latest and greatest. But we know that many of you are in an environment where you have many existing applications that are running on expensive and brittle legacy systems. And we also know that modernizing those systems is very hard. So last year, we released a capability, a new product actually, called Relational Migrator. This helps you move your relational data into a MongoDB document-oriented model. We've worked with companies like PowerLedger, which is a renewable energy company, to move monolithic applications into microservices architectures on Atlas. We're working with Nationwide Business uh, uh, Building Society in the UK. They're dealing with a SQL Server end-of-life issue, so they're migrating all those SQL Server applications into Atlas with MongoDB. Now, the feedback's been really great because of three cap key capabilities that we have in Relational Migrator. One, schema modeling. We connect to your existing relational database, give you a beautiful visual of your existing schema, and allow you to map that to a hierarchical document-based model. We then focus on the data migration itself, whether it's coming from Oracle, SQL Server, uh, Postgres, Sybase, we allow you to synchronize data either in a batch fashion or a continuous fashion from your source database into that new MongoDB schema that you designed. And you can target both Atlas or self-managed versions of MongoDB for that migration. And then we generate sample app code, which means that we look at that existing schema and generate sample MQL queries so you can jumpstart your development process on top of that. I'm excited to announce that Relational Migrator is now generally available. You can download it on mongodb.com, start playing around, connecting it to your existing relational database, and it gives a real feel for how simple it is to move traditional rows and tables and relationships in a relational database to the relationships in a hierarchical document model in MongoDB. Now, if we take a step back, 
we understand that modernization of an application is more than just schema and data migration. Certainly that's one piece of it. We know you have to actually convert the queries. Typically in this model, SQL query is moving over to Mongo's query, MQL language. You also need to modernize the application. Oftentimes we see an architectural change to microservices. Perhaps you have to update the language, maybe moving off a traditional programming language to something more modern. But that's not all. You oftentimes have to analyze the application to even understand its business logic, because the team that developed it may no longer even work for your company. And of course, at the end of the process, you need to be able to validate and test things. Is the performance like you expected? Is the functional testing the same as the source application? It's a complex process that involves human effort as well as technology. Well, we're very excited because we think that AI holds the potential to really help in all of these different areas of the application modernization lifecycle. And one of the first things we're focused on post-GA of Relational Migrator is helping you translate SQL code automatically to MQL queries. Let me show you how. So there's probably not a day that goes by right now that you don't see some sort of co-pilot-like capability that shows how easy it is to augment your development lifecycle and auto-generate boilerplate code. But the reality is when you're analyzing existing codes and queries and translating that accurately, that's a harder problem. So we've been working with public foundational LLM models as well as our own proprietary information around how to accurately and efficiently write MongoDB queries to train the relational migration engine to be able to connect to your relational schema and automatically recommend the appropriate MQL output. It then allows you to test it and rate with the accuracy as part of your test process and improve the algorithm over time and the model over time using reinforcement learning. As you can tell, we are very excited about the promises this holds and we're gonna be moving beyond query translation to application code translation and testing and validation in the coming years. This is an area where we can really help customers move a broader array of legacy systems onto a more scalable and cost efficient platform like MongoDB. Now, Stepping away from the technology, one of the things that's the most rewarding part of our jobs at MongoDB is to be able to see all the amazing things that you all are building, the amazing applications, the disruptions that you're bringing to your industries. So I have the privilege this year of recognizing three examples of companies that are doing amazing things. The first innovation award goes to Radial. Radio will build a fulfillment solution platform that powers big global brands. Think Calvin Klein, think Estee Lauder, big retail brands. With MongoDB, they were able to scale massively. They expanded their accounts and now process $150 million of sales transactions on our platform in a single day. We're our core system of record. Next, we have Ford. There are quite a few folks here from Ford, so I'm sure they'd be happy to talk about their experience, but they leverage us for a variety of technology solutions internally that help drive their supply chain and the development of their car like, car's life cycle. And last, but certainly not least, we give the Inspiring Innovation Award to Hugging Face. Hugging Face built their entire open source ML platform on MongoDB Atlas. This GitHub for AI has been pivotal to bringing open source AI models to the entire developer ecosystem. Please join me in congratulating just these three great examples of innovative companies building on MongoDB. Now, over the years, we've helped 43,000 customers, whether it's mid companies like Midland Credit Management who are e able to scale their application 50X with Mongo or Rent the Runway, with their retail brand showing a 60% decrease in processing time, all these different modernization efforts across the world. But one of the things we've learned as we work with all of you is that every industry is unique. You have your own use cases, your own challenges, your own regulations, perhaps your own ISVs that are specific to the use cases in your environment, and perhaps even independent specialized frameworks for a particular industry. So recently we announced a new program at MongoDB called Atlas for Industries. This is a combination of things. We bring forward innovation workshops with dedicated industry experts from our team as well as our partners, cloud partners, tech partners, to help you with the best practices we see across your industry. We give you free credits so you can test and experiment with MongoDB as you think about your modernization effort. And we're building tailored MongoDB courses on university that are specific to particular industry verticals, whether it's financial services or healthcare, along with webinars and solution workshops 
tailored to the specific needs of your environment. Now, we started this program in June with support for financial services. A month later, we rolled out support for the public sector. And today, I'm excited to announce that we're rolling out Atlas for Industries for automotive and manufacturing. Watch this space. This is all about knowledge sharing. This is about bringing expertise to bear that's specific to your environment, allowing our technology to be customized and solving problems for your particular industry. Now, I talked about a lot. Our integrated platform, new capabilities like stream processing and vector search, as well as improvements to the core platform. All of this to us at MongoDB is fundamentally our commitment and our promise to you that we will continue to deliver a wide range of capabilities that empower your needs, not just today, but out into the future. That will do so with developer experience top of mind, giving you an intuitive and flexible way to work. And we're gonna do so on a foundation of scale, performance, and security that's best in class. So as you partner not just for one application, but multiple applications across your environment, we aim to be a partner that's along that entire journey. We are very excited at MongoDB and are very motivated to see all the different things that you're building. So please look for our teams. We appreciate your feedback, especially the feedback about what we're not doing well so we can get better. We'd love to learn from your peers. I want to thank you all for listening to the keynote. Please enjoy the talks. I'm going to introduce my friend Megan, who's going to walk you through the logistics and all the other exciting stuff we have today in Chicago. And thanks again for attending. <laughs>